to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, to the left. Na kick, na kick, na kick. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 27 of the Mace of Skeins podcast. My name is Macy, and this is my little corner of YouTube where I talk all things knitting, all the projects I'm working on, and all about my hand dyed yarn business, Mace of Skeins. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for clicking my channel time and time again. And if you're a new viewer, well, thank you. Thank you for clicking my little video in the sidebar to see what I'm yakking on about. All right, well, um, yes, it's the 27th episode, and it is also St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day, and if you're not wearing green, I'm pinching you through the screen. Uh, you can't pinch me, because I'm wearing green. I think it's crazy that last episode I was talking about how, I'm in DFW, Texas, by the way, if you guys didn't know, um, I was talking about how we got the, like, snow apocalypse, and then today it was 81 degrees, and apparently we're under tornado watch now. I have no idea what's going on, but um, I've got a lot of exciting things to show y'all this episode, so grab your drink. I'm quoting Chevy Rell if you haven't watched the Chevy Rell Stuff podcast. She always drinks and says grab your drink, so go check her out. I will link to her down below. But I am drinking. I tried to be all fancy with my little strawberry on top. This, I have a um, wine subscription. I always, in all of my videos, if y'all don't read the description box, you're missing out. I have a lot of stuff down there. I work my ass off typing up and linking to everything I talk about. So um, if there's anything that you're curious about that I ever talk about on the podcast, 99.9% .9 of the time it's linked down below. But um, I have a wine subscription that I have and I have a $50 off coupon, which is in the description box. Um, so you literally can get $50 off of your box. Um, it is a like monthly thing, so if you want to use the $50 subscription, or $50 off your subscription to get 50 bucks off the first time, and then once you get in the mail, cancel it, I'm not stopping you. But, um, I don't like white wine, like, by itself. I, I'll drink it if there's no red wine, but you'll never catch me just, like, ordering a glass of white wine. Um, I'm a big Pinot person. I have Pinot Noir. I like Pinot, um, a lot. And I, yes, I know that there's also a Pinot Grigio. I I'm not a fan. I do like rosé, but uh, I had, in the in the um, subscription box that I got, it was one where I had forgotten to change my preferences to, like, red only, and they gave me three whites and three reds, and I was like, mm. okay, great. I got, I got some, I got some white. My strawberry just hit my glasses. So I mixed, I've got a big uh, carafe that I keep on my, that I decanter my wine into, but, um, I mixed some cranberry juice with this, so I, I've got a little white wine spritzer going on. So if you haven't already, if it's morning for you, grab some coffee or some tea or some matcha, and uh, if it's evening for you, or hell, if it's morning, grab some wine with me too, because we got lots to talk about. Okay, well, first off, um, did what were y'all's thoughts on the donut video? I know it was kind of wacky, but the reason behind, not wacky, but like way different than what I normally do, but the reason behind it was, um, if you haven't watched my last podcast episode, I made, I knit these little donuts as like a present uh, for one of my family friends who's having a baby. I've got the hiccups, I'm sorry. Um, so I knit these donuts and there was a giveaway on my last episode. Congrats to the person who won it. Y'all, please check your comments on the day, like when I do a giveaway, if I say like, oh, it's going to be on this day when I'm drawing the winner, please check your comments because I comment back on your post. Like when you comment, I'll like respond and say like, oh, that donut sounds great. And then like underneath it, I say like, hey, congratulations, you won, please message me, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I commented on somebody's and like they said how much they loved the giveaway prize and everything. And then like my rule is I wait three days and from midnight to midnight. <sighs> and they never responded back, so I had to redraw the winner, and then the new winner responded, like, within five minutes, so, um, it's already out in the mail. I'm pretty sure they should be getting it today or tomorrow, but, y'all, if there's a giveaway, check your comments, because that's how I announce that you've won, and I'll also throw it up on the community tab. If you don't check the community tab, it's just, like, a chat forum thing on YouTube, um, but anyways, I did a giveaway, uh, because I did these donuts, I knit these donuts, and I kind of was, like, every time I I posted, like, hey, tell me your favorite donut flavor. I was like, oh, that one sounds good. Well, shit, that one sounds good. That one sounds good. I've never had that one. And I realized I am not um, very well known in the donut area. Like, I've 
I thought I knew a, a, like a bunch of donut flavors, but turns out I don't. And so I made a list of all the donuts I've never had before that you guys have recommended. And I was like, why not go and try them? And I was planning on going and getting them anyways. And I'm like, I'll just vlog it. Like, why not? So I went and ate all of the donuts. If you haven't watched it, I went and ate all the donuts that y'all recommended, except for a couple, because they, I couldn't find a donut store that had them. But I decided to vlog it and throw it up. So um, if that's your thing, if you like to watch vlogs of people going around getting donuts, you should check it out. But if not, it's not a podcast episode, so you didn't miss anything. But it was really fun to do. Um, sorry, my skin is so dry because of the crazy weather. Um, but it was really fun, so I'm probably gonna do, I'm not doing a giveaway this episode, I will be doing a giveaway next episode. I don't wanna, I don't like doing them back to back, um, because then I feel like I just get repeat watchers that just want the giveaway rather than like actual people who watch it like you do. Um, so I'm gonna do a spring collection giveaway, which yes, the spring collection is out. And I will, uh, talk about that in just a second, but, um, next episode I will be giving away a few of those games, but... Where was I going with that? I don't know why I started. Oh, just the donut video. Yeah, I am I'm probably going to do more of those because it was really fun. And um, I it forces me to try foods that I've never tried before. So let me know your thoughts on that. If you've watched it and if you haven't watched it, you should go check it out. I just dribbled some wine on my shirt. Uh, finished objects. I have one. Um, and it's crochet. Oh my gosh. When was the last time that I had a crochet finished object? It's definitely been, um, like over a year. Definitely been over a year. This is also going to the same, uh, person, which it is confirmed they do not watch the podcast. So I'm still not going to say who it is just in case, um, they decide watching it one day. But I, I talked about them last time and they didn't like message me or anything. So I've confirmed that they don't watch it. But they, their theme is like dogs. So I made the donut toys before I knew that. But I, this is terrifying. <laughs> I crocheted a little dog baby rattle. So the kid can like play with it like that. But this is very difficult. I um, am not very good at reading crochet patterns, but it was fun to do. Um, it's just brown acrylic yarn that I had in my stash and then a wooden ring. I went to the craft store to get this wooden ring. Um, and they had it on their website and I was going to do curbside pickup, but they don't do curbside pickup. They have it on their, uh, website. Like you could buy it. They're stu I stuffed it so full that like the stuffing is coming out. Um, they have it on their website that you could buy it and then you have to like pay to get it shipped to your house. And I was like, can I not just like pick it up at the store? Cause I don't really want to go in to shop, but, um, I had to go in. Don't worry. I was wearing a mask despite what the governor of Texas wants us to do. <laughs> um, so I went in and I was like, hey, do you guys have the wooden rings? Like, where are those? Because, I mean, how would I know exactly where to go in the store? And uh, she immediately snapped and was like, we don't sell those anymore. We moved to plastic. And I was like, oh, well, it seems like you would do the opposite, like move away from plastic to wood. But okay. And uh, so I went searching through the store and I found them, but they were um, in the jewelry section. These are like wooden bangles. So if you're in your craft store by you looking for wooden rings, apparently they've moved to plastic. So uh, just go in the jewelry section and get some wooden bangles because they look the exact same. And I mean, they're, I think the wooden rings would have been just like a little bit thicker, but this serves the same purpose. And I was not about to put plastic on this, but um, yeah, this creepy little dog that I made looks nothing like the pattern picture because um, I'm not very good at omikarumi. But, and I don't know how to read a crochet pattern, so, uh, the ears I made up, I, f I, like, tried to read the pattern, and then I got confused, and then I just did my own thing. See how this one is one shape, and that one's a complete different shape? This one looks like a, like, deflated balloon, like, when you haven't blown it up yet. And the face is just flat-out creepy. I don't know if you'll be able to see it since it's so dark, but, um... I hope this doesn't scar the kid, but it was from, it's called the Puppy Dog Teething Ring from a Studio 1859. So I will have it linked down below, but here's my, oh my god, I just noticed his head is tilted. Dang. Well, I didn't sew it on straight. But I think the baby will still have fun with it. But this is my only finished object, <laughs> this little baby rattle. But I do have a big whip. So I have a more exciting with, but along the lines of the baby. I'll just go ahead and show this one. Um, not my baby, not pregnant. Um, this is a friend's baby, if you missed that. But I am... I don't know why I decided to do this, but I can't back out because I already told um, the girl's mom 
like the girl who's having the baby, I told her mom about it because I was asking for like, hey, what color is their house decorated like so I can do the right color. Um, but man, this is difficult. <laughs> I am not very good at intarsia and I am knitting an intarsia pillow um, with their dog they have on there who recently passed away and she was a huge part of the family so I am knitting her picture onto a pillow so the baby can meet her but uh, I'm using the pattern Will the Boxer Cushion by uh, Ruby and the Foxes it is good. it's like a well-written pattern and everything I can't show you the chart because then I mean I would be showing you the chart but you start out I also I have it all of this is just acrylic that I had in my stash. I've got this big, if y'all didn't know, I used to be um, a diver. So when I saw this bag, I had to get it. But I have all of the yarn in here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six strands attached to it. So this will be a little bit difficult to show, but you start by knitting the like whole bottom of the pillow. So this is just the garter, or not garter, this is stockinette knit. Can you tell that I've had uh, multiple glasses of this so far? This is just stockinette knit flat, um, just back and forth. And then like once you knit this whole bottom part, then like I do the chart, which is 176 rows long. Um, so I'll knit the whole like face of the dog and then like I'll repeat this. Um, so there, it's a lot of knitting. Like I'm not even halfway through. I'm probably about like a third of the way through, maybe, probably either a third or a fourth of the way through, but um, I think you fold it like right here. So like the bottom of the dog, will ha it'll have like two inches and then um, the back of the pillow will be this. And I create, I sew the buttons on this side and then uh, when I bind off and I do the ribbing, I create little buttonholes. So like you open and you like slide the pillow on the inside, but <laughs> this is all I have. <laughs> so exciting, right? It's just the bottom, it's just the bottom of the dog. Yep. And look at these markers. I don't know how well you'll be able to see these, but they're little spades. Someone on Instagram named Caffeinated Cables, I'll link to their Instagram down below, made me these. And if you got a winter box, you also got one of those in the winter box attached to your card that said your name. But look, this is how far it is at the dog pillow. <laughs> That's going to take me a while. Um, and I've really only been working on it at like at night when I'm done working and I'll just like sit at the computer and I'm like, okay, I can lay it flat because I, well, I can't show you the chart, but I've been, um, I normally put washi tape and I just like peel, like I stick the pattern into a page protector and I put washi tape on it to mark my spots. And I was doing that for like the first three rows of the chart and I was like, it's, it's so, like it's worsted weight yarn and so I'm going through the chart quick enough, but like peeling it off and le like leveling it it was really kind of difficult, so I was I just peeled it off, and now I'm I took the chart out of the the um, sleeve cover, and I just like draw a sharpie line through it. So hopefully, I'm not gonna have to like pull back, or else I'm gonna have to re-download and print out the pattern again because I have been scribbling out when I complete a row. <laughs> okay, so my next whip done with baby stuff um, is actually a sample knit for me. I have not been very good at sample knitting my own colorways and this um, I won't say much about this yarn because it is part of an upcoming collaboration so I won't show you the cake but I will show you the sock um, and the sock that I'm knitting is called the Krufka sock I hope I'm pronouncing that right um, by Comfort Zone Knits and you guys I finally successfully did my first heel flap and gusset <gasps> I will put it on a sock blocker for y'all. I love and hate these sock blockers at the same time. Um, I don't remember where I got it, but when I did get it, there was like a split. Um, I think I ordered them, was it Knit Picks? I'm not sure. I'll go searching through my emails and I'll find uh, the link where I bought these from. But there was like a scuff in the metal and it kept snagging my yarn. Like you can, I put a piece of tape over it. But like as soon as I got them, and it's doing it here too, I need to put some tape over that. Like the metal is just like, not separating. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like sharp. Like it'll cut, like it did on another pair of socks, like split the yarn as I slid it up. And then when I pulled it back down, it like cut it even further. And so I had to go in and quickly, because the yarn was fraying, like it split it. Um, and I had to go through and I just had to like darn over it and create a patch. And I was like, what the hell? I, I just finished these socks. 
I was mad, so I had to put tape on it, but I just now noticed it's doing it on the heel too. So these, yes, they're great for drying your socks quick because they're like open and a lot of air can get through, but the wooden ones, I mean, shit, I don't know. I don't have a wooden pair. I do have one wooden pair that I showed last episode, but they are so thin. Um, and I mean, they're cool because I've got my like logo embroidered at the top, but it's like detachable for different sizes and it like wiggles and it falls off. So like when you put the sock on it, it's like it wiggles and the sock just slides off. Um, so I need to find like a good, I'm a nine and a half foot and I have these in a medium, like a woman's medium and a men's large. And I end up blocking mine on the men's larges because my foot's a little big. But um, I, like this is a men's large sock blocker right now. But uh, I need to find a good like, I'm a size nine and a half, sometimes 10. So one foot is bigger than the other. So I just size down and do a nine and a half. So I guess I would need a size nine sock blocker because you want your socks to fit with negative ease. Um, so if you know a cute, like, you know those thick, not thick, thick, but like centimeter thick, like the wooden sock blockers that have like cute stuff cut out on them. I guess I'm back in the market for another freaking set of sock blockers. But if you know, if you have one or you know where to get a good like wooden sock blocker that's not paper thin like my other one um let me know because i am sick of these splitting my yarn and yes i could go through and like put clear packing tape all over the whole thing but that's kind of tacky and i don't want to have to fix sock blockers that i've had for less than a year no i think i've had them over a year but i've only blocked like three pairs of socks on them anyway Long story short, these are the Krefka socks, <laughs> and I did my first heel flap and gusset, um, I just dropped the yarn ball, successfully, and I'm very proud of it, and it fits so good. I did, uh, it's my second time doing a heel flap and gusset, but I did the slip stitches wrong on the first time I did it, um, and it's, like, the thickest little piece of, I'm gonna rip it out, it's on my Monster Mash socks, um, but I'm gonna end up ripping it out and redoing it because I'm so, like, I love, now I see the hype around the heel flap and gusset. Like now I understand the hype. I'm too scared to do a contrast color. Oh, you can see my, where I switched rounds. Cause I don't know um, where you would, like do you just do the slip stitches and contrast? I'm not sure. But I love the way that this looks. It's stripes in the front. I did modify it a little bit. You're supposed to stop here, but I kept going. Um, and then there is a little lace detail. You can totally see that a lace detail on it and this little stitch marker is from my favorite stitch marker maker vixen or progress keeper i guess she does make stitch markers too um and i have one i didn't show it but i have um she sent me one because she's also located in texas it's a cowboy boot i don't know if you'll see that a little cowboy boot it's from the um texas collection it came with a couple of cactuses um and a cowboy boot a bunch of other cute stuff but oh it was this one that came with it it's just a little cactus and it's been great for marking my spot. Um, we went on a walk <laughs> and I knit this from the cactus down, except for like three rows. Uh, I knit it while we were walking. But this is, I'm not gonna, it's my yarn. Both of these are my yarn, um, but I have a collaboration coming up soon that is with this yarn. So if you want this colorway that I'm not telling you the name of yet, <laughs> but uh, next episode I will talk about it and it might be part of the giveaway. It's a whole, um, well, y'all just see it. Y'all will just see it. But that's on my whips. I've got one that I haven't casted on yet because I just dyed some yarn for it, but um, I printed the pattern and everything. I'm gonna be making the Outline Tank by Jessie Mae Designs. Ooh, my voice got really shaky right then. Um, the yarn is drying, so I haven't caked it up yet, but by the next episode, I will be knitting on that. Okay, well, let's talk stash. Enough about my whips. Something super exciting that I got in the mail that I bought um, the day after the whole, you know, when Bernie Sanders blew up because of the mitten, mitten, mittens pattern. Uh, Shelly Can designed Bernie sitting on a yarn ball with the mittens, and I pre-ordered the pin, and I finally got it. So I'm very excited. I've been waiting. It says feel the burr. I've been waiting to put it on my um, enamel pin displayer. I have a spot picked out already. Um, but I've been waiting to put him on there until I showed it on the podcast. So now I can do it. And on trend with the enamel pins, 
look how cool this is. Y'all know uh, the Woolies podcast. I talk about them like every episode. Uh, Moon and Yarn, who is Brie from the Brian part of the Woolies, the blonde one, who actually is not blonde anymore. She's got hot pink hair and it looks amazing. Um, her info will be on the screen and down below, but um, she has enamel pins. And of course I had to snatch one up and I also have been waiting to put this one on my enamel pin wall. And I've got a spot picked out right over here. Y'all don't care where they're going, but I have been so excited to put this on. I got this in the mail literally two days after I recorded the last podcast. So I've been sitting here being like, mm, put that up yet because I haven't talked about it. Up, don't put it up. So now I can finally put this up. And y'all should go snag one of these because I think she has a limited number. And I've never seen like a clear enamel pin before, but it's like clear acrylic. So it's not, it's not heavy at all. Um, this one is pretty heavy. This is like, it's not metal. Maybe it is metal. I don't know, but it, it's very heavy, but this one is not heavy at all, which I really like, and I would prefer this if I was putting on a project bag, but since I don't carry my stuff on project bags anymore, I put them up on here. The like weight of it doesn't really matter, but I love, love, love this. And I also have a jean jacket. It has a bunch of enamel pins. So this one might, I might have to get another one. This might go on my jean jacket, and that one might go up there, or I don't know. I'll probably put this up on the wall. Anyways, go check out this you can't buy anymore because it was a pre-order, but uh, Moon and Yarn has these in her Etsy store, so go snag one, and she also has beautiful weavings. Um, this is from Moon and Yarn. This one was a custom one from Moon and Yarn that I had no idea that I was getting. And then right here, um, I've got a little Christmas ornament that's like very pink lemonade -y. and then this she made for me. It's got the most beautiful shades of blue, and it's a crescent moon. Um, I just love her stuff, so go check out uh, Moon and Yarn Etsy store and her Instagram because she has really pretty pictures. Um, and go get an enamel pin. Mm. That is so good. I would probably be shunned by all the wine snobs if they knew that I poured <laughs> cranberry juice. Well, it's cran grape and cran apple mixed together. Um, if they knew that I poured that into a $25 bottle of wine. <laughs> but it's delicious. And if I was smart, I would have this strawberry soaking in it so I could eat a boozy strawberry, but I didn't, um, I didn't wash it. And I don't really want the wine to taste like leaves. A little bit of advice, if you've got cheap wine that doesn't taste very good, add some Sprite or add some juice to it and make yourself a spritzer. Okay, keeping on track with the Woolies, Haley. Y'all know her, Loch Ness. <sighs> One of my fiber best friends talk about her all the time. Um, I got a package in the mail well, two people I have to thank for this. Megan from Rainbow Cake, Rainbow Cat, Cake, Cat, Rainbow Cat Cake. One of those, I can't remember exactly what it is, but her name is Megan. Um, her info will be down below. But she was doing a D-stash and Haley saw her D-stash and um, this skein from Yarn Love, which also all, of everything I talk about is linked down below. This colorway is, I'm, I think Jane Austen is the base. I'm not familiar with this dye or so, I'm not really sure. But the colorway is called Unicorn Poop. <laughs> Haley said she saw it and she thought that I needed it, which I'm very glad she thought that. And um, she just had Megan send it to my address instead of Haley's address. And I love it. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it. So it's actually, it's been living on the side of my desk since I got it in the mail. Um, so I could talk about it on the podcast, but I have no idea what I wanna make with this. Part of me wants to make pair of socks just because I've been like learning socks now, but it's 84% Superwash Merino and 16% Stellina. So it's got way more sparkle in it. So I don't know if I want to just shove that on my feet. I think I might want to, I don't know what I want to do with this, but I love it. And then something extremely exciting. So Megan also does hand spun and she also has an Etsy store, which is super exciting. And I will link everything down below, but she, she should see watches the podcast. So hello. I know you're watching right now. She sent me some of her hand spun. You guys, my hand spun stash is slowly growing. Have I did with any of it? No. Am I terrified in it with it? Yes. Um, do I like to just stare at it? Also? Yes. But this look at this, you guys, they don't have names, but if I was to come up with a name, this one would be lemonade, and this one would be, no, not lemonade, summer lemonade, summertime lemonade, and this one would be movie theater candy. <laughs> those, are, those aren't the real names, these don't have names. But she sent me some of her hand spun. 
Oh, I love it so much. Thank you, thank you. I was not expecting this, um, but I love it so much. And another thing that I was not expecting, which I got today, I went to the um, post office, or my P.O. box right before I started recording this, and what I've been setting my wine on, on my oversized wine glass. You're watching this right now. Chloe, she made me a little coaster. I'm gonna like pretty much restrict myself to just use this for coffee because I have a ring. I have a white desk down here. Um, it's just a cheap old Ikea desk that I've had since what, high school. Um, I have like a ring where my coffee cup is because it's like, what's that material? Not enamel, but it's like the, um, the Ikea material that's like that, like a uh, particle board with that flat piece of, I don't know what it's called on top of it, but it's painted uh, and it chips like super easy. Well, if you set a hot coffee cup onto it, it'll start to like bubble up around it. So I'm like, Ur. I set one that was extremely hot and like slowly over the course of like five years, it's started to like bubble. It looks gross and it's like the paint is flacking off. Anyways, um, I am going to, this is now going to live on top of that so I can set it and nobody can, nobody comes over, but so nobody sees the little gross peely part of my Ikea desk. So I'm very, like, I didn't know I needed this, but I definitely needed it and I love it and it's so soft. I have no idea what the pattern is, no idea what the yarn is. Um, I know it's crochet, but it is, it's like a perfect looking mandala flower. I love it. But yeah, my wine has been sitting on that. So if you haven't heard the clinking of my wine glass when I set it down, it's because this coaster, coast, coaster is being a little cushion for it. Uh, but Chloe made this for me and I love it. And also something that Chloe made for me is this, like, look at this. It's like a springtime hat. I was about to say summery. It is pretty summery, but it's very springy to me. It's a crochet hat, which I am not very good at crochet and I've pretty much forgotten everything um, there is to know about crochet. So I, um... I don't know what type of stitches this is. It looks like front post, back post, treble crochet. I could be completely wrong, but I do know the pattern. I know Zach Stout of the Stout Stitch has definitely made, um, it's, it looks so cute, look at it. He has definitely made this hat pattern before because I recognized it as soon as I opened the box because um, I saw it. I've seen this pattern before. Um, so go watch his podcast to find out what this is, but I, lo I have no idea what this yarn is. It, I have no idea what this yarn is. Uh, it feels like cotton. So the reason I think it might be cotton, just based on the way it feels, um, but I am so excited that it is because my partner and I have been, since the weather has been getting nicer, but the allergies have been killing me. Um, we've been walking and he's been playing basketball and stuff and it does get like a little chilly, but uh, I think I'm gonna start wearing this because I he's been wearing like a hand knit hat but like the wool like has been like when he takes it off it's like just his head is so red so i think i'm gonna start wearing this cotton version um so my like head stays because sometimes we go walking well our schedule um our morning is normal people's dinner time but uh so we've been walking when we wake up which is like 7 p.m by the time we get out walking um and so it does start to get a little bit chilly so i will definitely be wearing this on my walks and it fits perfect i love it and probably my favorite thing that I've ever gotten and that she sent, look at this. I have no idea where it's gonna go. I wanna find a place to put it. Y'all, I have so many art prints. The paintings that I've gotten and like the prints and all that stuff, I just, I need to update my yarn wall or my podcasting backdrop, which I'm a dumbass and I nailed. Like this is tacked up, but like I didn't have any tacks and I was so impatient, but I had those like little, like, you know, those, like, little tiny nails that, like, you don't, you can shove them in with your thumb. You don't have to, like, hammer them in. I had a bag of those laying around, and I was just like, I'm going to put them up with that. So now I'm going to have to get, like, a little something to pull all the nails out because I didn't use tacks, and I don't know why. But anyways, I want to find a spot. You can see his little ears poking up. Look at this. Came with a little blanket. I don't know if you want to sit on there. I kind of like the blanket draped over him so you can see it. Look at this. I'm, I think it's a llama. I think it's a llama. Alex thinks it's a donkey. I don't think he's an alpaca because alpacas don't have this pointy of ears and like the little hairs up here. I know that llamas have those. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that this guy is a llama, 
Um, but oh my gosh, look at him. It was the box was so big and like the hat was on top and um, she like sent a little note with her business cards, which by the way, um, if you like this llama, you can't get this exact one, but she does have more in her Etsy store, which I will have on the screen and all the information down below, but it is Coco's Crochet Goodies. Um, it's an Etsy store, but she does have like lots of amigurumis, so I don't, I don't know if he's a llama or if he's an alpaca. I'm gonna go with alpaca, or yeah, go with llama, um, so he can match this llama up here, but look at him. I love the just like big bobbly head and the little, the little rug, like I love this. And everything, it's like it looks, compared to this, I mean, come on, clearly, I don't, I'm not very good at amigurumi and she is amazing at it. But look how cute he is. And I don't know if you could see the eyelashes. Just, isn't that so much fun? I was so shocked when I got this. I, this, like I've never had somebody make, like I've always made, I've made unicorns, I've made foxes, I've made any animal. Um, and I'm about to start making a moose for one of my friends. Uh, her scissors having a baby. But just, like, this is so, like, the quality. God, my hiccups. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, like, the spiky hair. It's so perfect. Like, this looks like it would be, like, at a store. I love this so much. And I love the bobbly head. Oh, I love it so much. And I was so shocked. Because, yeah, I opened the box and it was, like, the hat and then the flower coaster. And I was like, what is this big thing wrapped in tissue paper? And I had no idea. And I was like, why is that so big? And I just, I op I ripped open the front part and it was just like the hair spiking out. And I was like, what the heck is this? And I pulled it out and it was this little guy. Oh, it's so cute. So I definitely need to find a spot where he can be out and about. Because I love this. He's probably going to live. I've got another, like my desk is here, but I've got um, like another side table right here. So it might just be... Like, I've got my prints uh, from my friend Kayla that were up here, so I might I might just put him sitting next to there, which sucks because it's not in frame of the podcast, like, what you guys can see, but just, oh, I just love this. I can't get over it. Thank you so much, Chloe, for sending me this. It's so much fun. All right, well, I think I have talked and talked enough about my P.O. Box stuff. Also, I do have a P.O. Box, um, and every, all the information is down below if you do want to send me stuff. But, um, and I'm forever grateful for all the people who support my Kofi and support my, um, podcast. Kofi, for some reason, it's not letting me log in. I'm getting notifications that people have been sending, like, buying me Kofis. Uh, and it's not letting me respond and, like, say thank you. So if you have sent me a Kofi and you're like, bitch hasn't responded, it's because it's not, like, I can see them as an outsider. But, like, when I log in to my account, um, it's not on there and it won't let me, like, do the little heart thing or respond to it for some reason. I don't know, I've emailed the customer service about it, so we'll see. I've been waiting um, for about like a week now for them to respond, but people are busy, I get it. So if you have sent me a Kofi and I haven't responded, I have seen it and thank you, I just, the app, um, or not the app, but like the website is not letting me respond. Um, so again, thank you, I have seen it and I do appreciate every single penny, but once I figure out why it's not letting me see the thing and respond to it, I will respond. But besides all that, who's ready to see some spring colorways? And the reason I'm drinking on a podcast is because launch day was yesterday, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, um, but y'all will be watching this on St. Patrick's Day, and boy oh boy, <laughs> my hand is shaking. Launch days are always so stressful, and like the days, like the first three days after launch day, like when I launch a new collection or something, or like a box, it's always so stressful because I'm like, do people like it? Do they not like it? Am I gonna get good feedback? Am I gonna sell it? Like, <sighs> so after I show these, I've been very nervous about these. So please let me know your thoughts down below and um, go favorite them and buy them on Etsy if you like them. I lost my strawberry. Well, I guess I now for sure won't be eating that. Well, I am gonna, I am going to put it back on my glass for continuity effects. Um, dang, I guess my glass is hidden and it fell off. Okay. I'm just going to start with the one that um, has received... I have strawberry on my glasses. <sighs> I don't know if um, 
they are leaving a glare or anything so I'm sorry if they are I should I do wear these um I have like 12 pairs of glasses uh, I should be wearing them like every single day I never do when I podcast because I've always been worried about the glare but I figured well, why not give it a shot but um I should be wearing them like every single day I got I mean, shit, I got them prescribed to me, and that eye doctor said to start wearing them every day, but I always forget because, like, I can still see, like, with and without them. It's just, like, way more HD, and I didn't know that I wasn't seeing that great until I got them, so it's like I can still read everything. Um, just, like, stuff far away is blurry, or, like, super up close is, super up close is blurry, so it's, like, a not a... 100% need, but damn, I don't get headaches and I can see pretty good when I do wear them. I just always forget to put them on. Anyways, I'm gonna start out showing y'all the colorway that has received so much love. Um, and I mean, I see why, because I absolutely love it too. And I'm trying not to be biased because I dyed it, but I'm pretty damn proud of it. So, uh, without further ado, let's welcome Tulip to the collection. Oh, yeah, I think this is my favorite spring colorway that I have made so far. It has all the colors of tulips minus the green. Um, it's got, oh, I just, I'm, I'll show you the colors that you can get in it. Um, I'll pick that up later. So I got so much love from tulip that I turned it into, I deconstructed the colorway. So all the colors that I used into this, um, I decided to dye a 50 gram set, sorry for the glare, that has all the colors in here. Ooh, I think these go so good together. I'm, I'm very proud. I am very proud of the deconstructed, sorry for the crinkles, um, the deconstructed tulips, which is, with this is called tulips with an S, and this is tulip with no S. But um, I also offer, I offer both of these in the shop, so you can get the 50 gram tulip sets, or you can get the full skein of tulip, or you can get one 50 gram set and one skein of tulip, because honestly, that, I think that would look so good if you were knitting like a shawl, or crocheting, or whatever you want to do with it. Um, and like, in between those, like each color block, you had tulip in the middle, so it was like, perfectly phased into the next color. I really want to do it, but I do not have time to do that. So I created the kits so y'all could do that. And this is my second colorway that goes great with Tulip. I highly recommend pairing these two together. Um, this is Marigold. If you've seen the Marigold flowers, this, uh, I, I pretty much nailed it. If you go to my Instagram and you go under my highlights called My Yarn, it's got my logo on it, and you tap through, um, I compared the flower that I based all these off of. So my spring collection is based off of flowers. Um, I have the yarn on top and the flower on the bottom so you can like really see what they look like. Marigold has orange and yellow in it and it looks great with Tulip. And a lot of y'all have been buying these two together these look so good together. So if you're wanting to do like a big project with these, I would highly recommend either getting the full set of Tulip, um, like the one skinny this and the 50 gram sets or m merging these two together because these, um, the yellow, the main yellow in Marigold is the same yellow in Tulip. So they work perfect. But ooh, those are my first two colorways. My personal favorite is this one. This is my favorite, my favorite flower is a daisy, um, a blue daisy to be in fact, but this is my second favorite flower that only comes out around springtime, and it's a purple pansy. <gasps> Ooh, I'm so thrilled with the way this came out. You know the, the flowers that are like dark purple on the outside and then light purple in the middle and then yellow at the very center? Or oh, no, I got that mixed up. It's light purple on the edges. No? I don't know what it is. It's light purple, dark purple, and yellow. And I just had to turn it into a colorway. I love this one. This one would also look really good with marigold. Because it's got the yellow pop. Mm, I love this. This one's my favorite. It's a very blurple purple. Um, this does not... Uh, I did have somebody message me on Instagram asking if it was the same purple as Purple Dragon Martini. No. Purple Dragon Martini is a very pinky purple, and this is a very blue purple. It's violet. I'll say that. I love it. So, I also have this color, which 
I have two sock sets, and two of the sock sets are also based off of full skeins, but when I dye all of my yarn for collection, like, launches, I only dye four of each skein, like, in between two and four of each skein, um, and I, pe since I posted it the yesterday, people have already bought it, and I've already shipped some orders out of the spring collection, and I didn't think to save a full skein of this colorway, um, but I have Lily of the Valley, which is the full skein, which I'm about to show you, but I don't want you to be confused, so I'm going to tell you about it first. Lily of the Valley is the full skein, and then this is the sock set. So, look, Lily of the Valley is this full skein, and then I offer sock sets. And you guys, the exciting thing that I have about this update is I have 50 gram sock sets. That's what these guys are. I think I shipped, yeah, I shipped all of my full size sock skeins, or full sized sock sets, um... But this, this is a full skein, a 100 gram skein, and this is a 50 gram skein. So it's just a full skein split into half, um, and you can get a, like a substantial, like, full pair of socks out of this. Uh, but I just decided to offer two different sizes. So if you didn't want a full sock set, you don't have to get a full sock set. You can get a 50 gram sock set, and I love it. But Lily of the Valley is the main color. Um, it's a white with just like this barely there sagey green, um, and I love it. And then obviously the mini skein paired with this is a darker version of the green that's in here. But that's Lily of the Valley and the Lily of the Valley sock set. The other sock set that I have that is also a full colorway in the shop, but I didn't think to save the full skein before I podcasted, uh, is Cherry Blossom. This one, I am not a pink person, but I really like this one a lot. Um, if you've seen a cherry blossom, like the Japanese cherry blossom trees, it is like a burgundy branch, which is th what this is, a burgundy branch, and it's got those like light pink orchid color, like pink orchid flowers, they're not orchids, but it's the same color, um, and then like the inside of it has these like darker pink little antenna looking things, they're obviously not antennas, but it's the inside of the flower, and so this, the um, full skein, which is called cherry blossom, is... Um, like a baby pink and white, and it has like speckles of the darker pink on there. It looks just like a cherry blossom tree. And I like, I'm so proud of this one. So these are also 50 gram sock sets. So I have this as the cherry blossom full skein and the 50 gram sock set and the 100 gram sock set. Oh, those are my two sock sets and I love them. So this is also, I mean, all of these I love so much, but this is one of my favorite, favorite Colorways I have, this is not based off of a flower. Um, I The last two that I'm showing you aren't based off of flowers, but this one, it is so just like soft and like baby-like and I love it. I don't know how well it's gonna pull up on camera, but this is called Sunday and it is so like Easter pastel. Oh, I love it. It's got green, pink, yellow, and blue and this would be beautiful as a baby blanket. Um, if you wanted it, something for a baby in this, it's perfect, or if, I think this would be so pretty if you got, like, if you knit a shawl, or not a shawl, well, a shawl would be really pretty in this, uh, with, like, tassels in it, but if you knit a sweater, like a weekender, this fits like a boxy, this is my favorite shirt, and I definitely want to knit a boxy, but, like, if you knit, like, a boxy style shirt, like a weekender or a boxy, um, out of this color, it would just be, it's so, like, pastel, and it makes a statement without making a statement, Oh, I just love this one so much. This one's called Sunday. Damn strawberry keeps falling off. Last one of the spring colorway. I only have seven colors. Um, I have seven colors, two sock sets, and the 50 gram set. It is a smaller collection um, just because I wanted to hone in on the colors rather than offering like a huge selection of them. I wanted to like perfect a smaller group of them, so that's what I did. But this one is a complete 180 from the color I just showed. Look at this neon. This is called Spring Break. It is hot pink and lime green, and it's got some, um, like, white in there still, but, oof. This would be fun as a pair of socks, and it would be super fun as, like, a springy, summery tank top if you wanted to knit that. Oh, this one has been getting lots of love, too. It is so much fun. This one is called Spring Break. And something I have in my shop for a limited time only. Um, I'm glad I actually podcasted now rather than later because it won't be in my shop by the next podcast. But since it is St. Patrick's Day, I am doing, uh, this is only in the shop for two weeks. So right now, 
Um, well, if you're watching this on St. Patrick's Day, it's the 17th, and this is available until Sunday the 21st. This, call, this is called Kiss Me, I'm Irish, by the way, but it's my first time doing, like, a limited edition colorway, just because St. Patrick's Day, I mean, obviously it doesn't last very long, because it's one day, but, um, I just love it so much, and last year, um, St. Patrick's Day was my last day. It's been one year, happy one year of the pandemic. I, Hate to have to celebrate that holiday, but, uh, it's not a holiday, but you know what I mean. The St. Patrick's Day was actually the last day that I ever clocked in. Um, so the, today marks the one year anniversary of having a clock-in job working for somebody else. So that's, that's a, that's a thing. Um, but I like St. Patrick's Day a lot. Uh, I went with my partner and his family two years ago to, uh, New Orleans. We went down to, um, New Orleans, Louisiana, um, and we walked around the French Quarter and everything on St. Patrick's Day, and it was so much fun. We went to the parade and all that, but, uh, I love St. Patrick's Day, so I had to dye a colorway called Kiss Me, I'm Irish. It's a green with green and orange, it's a, like, Kelly green with, um, emerald green and monarch orange, um, speckles in it, and it's paired with, like, a monarch orange mini skein for the sock set, but I have this as a full skein and as a sock set. And if you are watching this on St. Patrick's Day, well, good for you, because you can use the coupon code that I have. Um, it's only available for, like, starting midnight on St. Patrick's morning, um, like 12 o'clock, until midnight St. Patrick's night. So for March 17th only, all day, you could get 15% off of anything in my Etsy store with the code I'm lucky. So if you are feeling lucky, use the code I'm lucky and you can get 15% off anything in the store. Not just limited to the Kiss Me I'm Irish sock set or full skeins, but this is limited. So you, will can't, you won't be able to get this after March 21st. So if you're in my Etsy store on March 22nd looking for this, Sorry you missed the boat, so go get it now, because it is limited edition, um, but I love this so much. So yeah, that's everything in, uh, that's in my shop. That's everything that is in there. I will show you it again. So you got, real quick, just run down, the, uh, tulips, 50 gram sock set, and if you've never, um, like, if you don't know what a 50 gram sock set is, it's, or not sock set, what am I talking about? 50 gram skein set. It is, um, each skein is 50 grams, 231 231 yards, so you get 250 grams total of yarn, uh, 1,155 yards. So it essentially is like two and a half skeins of yarn. And you can knit some awesome colorwork shawls, you can knit scrappy socks, you can knit anything with this. I love 50 gram sets. So I've got tulips in the 50 gram set, tulips in the full skein, which I love so much. I think, oh, th by the way, I don't know if I said this in my whips, I am knitting a uh, tank top out of this. Um, so knit one with me. Go get a skein of this. I also have Marigold, which is a super fun and bright spring colorway. I also have my favorite, which is Purple Pansy. I have this bright and fun. If you are allowed like me, you will love this one. It is spring break. And if you are a little on the quieter side or if you like pastels, this one is perfect for you. It is called Sunday. Oh, I love this one. And then last but not least, I have the two sock sets, which are also full skeins of Lily of the Valley and Cherry Blossom. And then, of course, Kiss Me I'm Irish, but this is only available until the 21st. So if you saw any of those things that you liked, you guys, now is your chance to go and snag it before my summer collection comes out. Uh, don't worry, you have time to go shop my spring update. I'm not only leaving these up for a little bit and being like, all right, now it's summer. Um, but go shop sooner than later because if you like one of those colorways, Mother's Day, I know in the UK it just happened last Sunday, but in the United States, time's ticking, it's coming. So if you see one of these colorways that you think your mom would like, uh, buy it cast on now so you can not even have to think and worry about your Mother's Day present because you'll already be knitting with it. And I mean, what mom would not love? A Mace of Skeins knitted or crocheted item. Come on. So I highly recommend uh, getting a couple skeins of my yarn to knit your mom or crochet your mom something for Mother's Day. This freaking strawberry. So I showed you the socks, my whip that I was knitting um, for an upcoming collaboration. Well, there you go. That's all I'm showing you. Um, that's a sticker. So y'all know what limited edition stickers mean. I will give you a couple of hints. 
So you already saw the yarn that I was knitting. Um, there will only be 30 available, so, and it's coming out soon. It will be out by the end of the month. Um, stay tuned on my Instagram for details, but if you have just the tiniest of idea what that could be, let me know your guesses down below. It's limited edition. There's only 30 available. Um, I will, I'm not going to make a separate video for it just because I'm going to talk about it on the podcast and I'm going to give one away. So, um, if you have an idea of what that might be that's spring related that also has a limited edition sticker, let me know your guesses in the comments down below. And if you do guess it right, um, I'm not going to tell you that you are right. I might leave a, uh, like a non descriptive, like, oh, good guess, wink, wink, wink. Um, but guess down below. Let me know, let me know what you think that, uh, I'll give you, I will give you another hint. Vix Knits is also a part of it. So let me know your guesses down below. Okay. I'm nearing the end of my second glass of this spritzer bubbly. Um, I do have a question for y'all because I am in the market for a new ball winder. Mine um, is finally starting to die every time I skein yarn. So if y'all don't know, I do offer um, the option for me to skein your yarn uh, when you buy it in my Etsy store. So it's got a little drop down menu that says cake my yarn, yes or no. So if you don't have a ball winder or a Swift, I do. I have this bad boy right here that um, Alex got me for my birthday a couple years ago. And I've got a, um, a ball winder, but it's dying. Um, and more and more of y'all have been asking me to cake your yarn, which I totally don't mind doing, but my ball winder is starting to die. Like I notice it making way more noises and like I'll twist it and then like the yarn will fly off and then I've got to like put it back on and then like messily do it and then re-cake it up to make it look pretty. It's just, it's starting to creak and crank and make lots of noises and the bottom, I have the Knit Picks ball winder by the way, um, the bottom part detached from it in the middle of like spinning it and I don't like do it super fast, I do it like at a normal pace. Um, and the ball winder fell off of the mount thing, which I didn't know was possible, but there was like a screw. And then I was also spinning it and yarn caught around it. And there was this like nasty, like gummy jelly. It was probably like wheelbarrow grease or something, but it was disgusting. That was coming from the inside of the, um, where it like, you know, the part that goes like this and the little thing that holds it, yarn got caught in there. And when I undid it, it was like covered in goo. So I'm guessing that like they put like wheelbarrow grease around it before they put it, like they assemble, I don't know, but it's starting to decay. <laughs> um, I've only had it for like two years. I've gone, this is my second one because the other one I had the arm, the little um, yarn feeder, it broke off. And so I'm on my second Knit Picks Ball Winder. I'm about to have to get my third, but they've been out of stock. Um, and I'm afraid it's gonna start dying pretty soon like within like the next month soon. So I am in the market for a new ball winder. I don't have a lot of space. So um, yeah, I can't get an electric one because I know those are like this big and you ha they have to constantly be, be set up. Um, and like there's some that are awesome and they're like all wood and they like I've seen those, but they're huge and they look also look like they have to be set up all the time. I just had this little corner of my desk where I like clamp it down and then I had to like stack a bunch of stuff so my Swift can be like five feet away and it's this, I don't have a very good setup for balling yarn, but I'm, I don't know if I should buy my third Knit Picks ball winder if I know it's just going to break in like a year and a half. So if you have a ball winder that you love, um, ooh, oops, and it's not the Knit Picks ball winder, let me know. It's the purpley like pink one that I have. I don't know if Knit Picks has multiple ones. <sighs> but I'm sad that it's dying. Um, so yeah, if you have recommendations on ball winders that aren't super pricey, like I'm looking to stay like in the under $75 range. So if you've got a ball winder um, that you recommend, let please let me know because I, I mean, I can't buy the Knit Picks one. I do have, um, like when I first started, I had uh, one that was Michael's brand, like the loops and threads. I just don't like the way that those cakes look. I mean, I have that one as an absolute backup just in case this one does break. I still like the way that those cakes look. Um, yeah, anyway, I know I don't like balling by hand just because I do have orders for them. And like every, probably like I have to cake up yarn, um, like four or five skeins, like every couple of days. So I need a sturdy one. That's not the Knit Picks one and that's not an electric one. Uh, so let me know. Okay, but 
my spring collection I am super proud of. I hope you guys like it. Let me know your thoughts down below. I am gonna hold these up one last time because I am just so damn proud of them. And I'm extremely nervous about them, so if you do like them, please show me some support on Etsy because, I mean, my Valentine's Day collection, y'all liked it, but I got the sense that y'all like didn't love it, love it. So let me know about this one because I am very happy I'm happy with the way these turned out. And what are your thoughts on my 50 gram sock sets? Because I've never offered these before. And if you guys like the 50 gram sock sets, I'm gonna keep doing them. Um, so far, like I've sold like six of them. So I can't really tell if that's like enough to keep them. So if you like the option to have 50 gram and also the option to have a regular full size skein, let me know. But I, I'm loving these. Let me get my purple pansies. It's hard when you've got little hands. So this took forever. <sighs> Damn it. I almost got it. This took forever getting them all on my hands so I could show them all at once. But here is the last look at my spring collection. And I'm so happy. No, I'm not holding up the 50 gram set of tulips because I don't have any more hands. It would be, if I did hold it, I would be holding it in my mouth, but then I wouldn't be able to talk. So I... Oh, what is your favorite? I don't know. I don't know. Tulip, I think, is my favorite. Oh, my computer just started updating. Um, tulip and, I don't know, Purple Pansy I love, but Tulip I want to knit a tank top out of. And then I love Lily of the Valley. Like, I want a mohair, like, sweater. Like, you know, the ones where you hold a strand of regular yarn and then a strand of mohair together? I want to do that with Lily of the Valley because I think it would be just so, like, minty and, like, oh. I don't know. What what are y'all gonna make with these? If you've got patterns and you're like, oop, yep, spring break right there, I'm gonna knit a blank, blank, blank shawl. Or if you see marigold and you're like, oop, I'm crocheting this thing, let me know down below. So I'm very curious what you guys are gonna make. And if you drop pattern recommendations, somebody else could look down and find it and find their new cast on. So here's the spring collection. There's my spring lineup, as they should say. Um, and also, don't forget, this little beauty right here um, is only available until March 21st. So if you are Irish, or if you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, or you just love green and orange together, um, you only have a week to get this. So here's Kiss Me, I'm Irish again. Uh, well, kiss me, I'm not Irish, but... <laughs> My spritzer is almost empty, so that means it's probably time to stop podcasting. And last podcast, I was saying how I was going to go make dinner. And I was talking about what I was going to make for dinner. And so many of y'all uh, sent me Instagram, like, you know, all the food accounts that, like, show the, um, nope, I was just about to eat that, but then I remembered it dropped on the floor. Um, all those food accounts that, like, show the recipes, like, the recipe videos and stuff. So many of y'all have been sending me those, and you're like, you should make this for dinner, you should make this for dinner. But actually, um... We're, we just ate some leftover pizza for lunch. Um, I had a really busy work day yesterday. Work as in Mesa Skeins. Um, that is my job. But, um, and the Lakers were playing, so I was like, let's just order pizza. Um, my go-to pizza, since I can't have tomatoes, is a spinach alfredo. And, oh, <sighs> Papa John's has the best spinach alfredo. I just get an all, um, the create your own white or pizza and then I put alfredo sauce and then I add double spinach, onions, and mushrooms. Sometimes chicken if I'm feeling chickeny. But I had um the half I got a medium pizza and I had um all of it except for three slices last night and then I had the remaining three slices uh for lunch today. So hmm. should probably make something healthy for dinner tonight. I have some tofu veggie dumplings that I might heat up. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna go make for dinner, but um, it's midnight, so. Mm, don't you just love carpet flavored strawberries? Well, I guess I will end it here. My glass is empty, and by this time, yours is probably empty too. So go browse my Etsy store, go browse my Instagram and tell me what colorways you think are the best, which ones are your favorite. Don't tell me your least favorite because that's just not nice. Um, but give me some ideas of what you're making because I'm also looking for ideas. I love the fact that I'm knitting a sample out of one of my colorways, the sock, this bad boy. I love that I'm knitting this because it's like, I'm knitting this for me, but yet I'm also knitting it to showcase one of my yarns. So um, I'm going to be knitting something out of my spring collection either in the tulips or the purple pansy 
or I don't know. I don't know if I want to cast on a sweater out of Sunday with mohair or Lily of the Valley with mohair. Ooh, let me know down below which one I should do. It's either going to be Lily of the Valley with mohair or Sunday with mohair. Do I know which one is going to be mohair? No. I don't know if I should do Lily of the Valley mohair held with like just my white yarn is called Snow. Um, if I should hold a, a skein of snow with a skein of Lily Valley on mohair or a skein of snow on mohair and Lily of the Valley on regular yarn. Does that make a difference? I feel like I should know that. I've never, I've only knit with like speckled yarn and then like a white mohair. I've never knit with like a patterned mohair with white yarn. If you've done that, let me know because now I'm just like, I've completely changed my mind. I'm not sure if you've done that, like if you've swapped like solid with variegated mohair or variegated solid with, wait, main color variegated with a solid mohair or a main color solid with a variegated mohair. There you go. That's hard to say. Um, if you've done that, let me know because now I'm very curious. Hmm. I don't know. I should make a deal with somebody. One person knit a sweater out of one version and I'll knit the sweater out of the other version and we can swap. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to end it here. I don't know how long this is. Happy St. Patrick's Day if you're watching this on the 17th. And if you are, don't forget to use the code I'm lucky for 15% off your order. But if you're watching this after St. Patrick's Day, have no fear. Podcast coupon code is here. Podcast 10 for 10% off your order as always every time you watch the podcast. So um, thank you again. Go outside, get some sun, take some allergies medication because allergies are high this time of year. Diffuse some essential oils. I've got my little diffuser back here. Um, I just started getting, not, I'm not like into that yet, but um, I noticed I was burning a candle and like there's a lot of black smoke and it did not help my asthma when I was already dealing with seasonal allergies. So somebody recommended doing um, peppermint and eucalyptus essential oil. So that's what I've been doing and it has been helping my asthma and my seasonal allergies. So if you are a diffuser type person, start diffusing. And if you've got um, recommendations or coupon codes for a better diffuser, this is some cheapo one I got from actually turn oh it's unplugged <laughs> never mind won't turn that on um if you got like a coupon code or anything for a good diffuser i just got the shitty cheap one from walmart it was like eight bucks because i'm like i'm dipping my toe into that world that was a pinky not a toe but you know what i mean um so if you've got recommendations or a coupon code for a nicer diffuser let me know down below all right you guys everything i mentioned will be in the description box along with links to all the shops that i talked about the coupon codes i have my p.o box address and all of that jazz all right, I will see you on the next episode, which will contain a giveaway, so I will see you then. In the meantime, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, keep knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, needle punching, needle embroidering, and everything in between. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Uh,